QuickBooks Online 2023. Adjusting entry, loan payable, short-term and long-term portions. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file we set up in a prior presentation using the 30-day free trial. We also have opened the free QuickBooks Online sample company. If you want the two open at the same time, you can use the incognito window. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Or another browser you can open incognito if using Google Chrome by selecting the three dots in the browser and incognito type into the search engine QuickBooks Online test drive. We're going to be using the sample company to compare the accounting view, the one Get Great Guitars is in, and the business view, the one the sample company is in. If you want to toggle between the two views, go to the cog up top, change the view down below. We're going to duplicate some tabs to put reports in like we do every time. Right click in the tab, duplicate it. Right click in the tab and then duplicating it. We're going to go back to the middle duplicated tab to the reports on the left, open up one of the favorites, that being the balance sheet. If you're in the business view, by the way, the reports are in the business overview on the left hand side and then the reports back to the accounting view. We're going to go to the tab to the right. We're going to go down to the reports on the left and let's open up the profit and loss this time. The other favorite financial close up the hamburger and change the range from 010123 to let's go to 022823 and then let's see it month by month side by side run it and then there it is january february and the total year to date tab to the middle close in the ham buggy scrolling up same change to that range we're going to go from 010123 to 022823 change it to the months on the drop down run it and there we have january and february our cutoff date is february so feb 28 is the cutoff date we're doing the adjusting entries which are all entered as of the cutoff making the financial statements correct to the best we can according to the accounting uh, method that we're using in our case and accrual method as of that date we're now going to be working down here in the liability area under the loan payables. We got two loans on the books as sub accounts under the parent account of the loan payable. So let's go over some issues with regards to recording transactions for loans payable, keeping in mind the bookkeeping perspective separate from the adjusting entry perspective, bookkeeping perspective. We want to make things as easy and automated as possible. From the adjusting entry perspective, we want to make the financial statements correct as of the cutoff date uh, so we can have it for external reporting purposes and for tax preparation. So one issue we have is that for external reporting, we often just want one account called loan payable or short term and long term loan payable account, perhaps. And for internal reporting purposes, we often want a separate account for each loan because that helps us to tie out to, say, the amortization table. So we can deal with that possibly with this kind of setup, having a parent account, loan payable, and then list out the name of the actual uh, lender, as well as possibly the last four digits of the loan number for the subsidiary accounts of the loan. So that's one issue. Another issue can be just simply with putting the loan on the books, because that's not a transaction that's going to be happening all the time. Once the loan is on the books, we can expect that the transaction to record interest or record the payments will be something that's repetitive. But putting the loan on the books is something that only happens when we finance the company. Sometimes it's easy because we might just get cash and then the other side goes to loan payable. We would see that coming through the bank statement. We can record it fairly uh, easily in that case. But sometimes it's a little bit more difficult, such as when we finance equipment, for example. So in that case, you could uh, record that transaction 
with a little bit more complex transaction or talk to your accountant, of course, who might help you to record it, that first initial transaction before you start making the payments. Or you might even say, hey, look, I'm gonna save the equipment purchases and simply uh, give that to my tax preparer or CPA at the end of the month or year so they can make the adjustment at that point in time. And when I start paying off the loan, that's when I'm just gonna make the loan account and I'm just gonna make the payments to the loan and ask my, my accountant to make the necessary adjustments to record the equipment as well as, as the interest and, and loan balance at that time. That's another method you can use. And that coincides to the other issue here, which is basically once the loan is on the books or once we start making the payments to the loan, in any case, there's gonna be three accounts affected instead of two complicating our ability to make automated, automatic automated transactions with bank feeds, for example, and the breakout between the interest and principal will differ. So, so then, so that's going to be an issue as well, because we can't just make the, the transactions automatic. So for example, if I look at the amortization table over here for one loan, we can see that we have the payments are the same. So that should help us to make the transactions automatic through the bank feeds possibly, but the breakout of the interest and in principal per payment will differ. So how do we deal with that? Well, one way we can deal with that is we just get the amortization table and then we basically each payment break out the proper portion of interest and principal and we double check that the loan balance matches our loan balance uh, in our books. That of course means that we're gonna need an amortization table, something that you're not always provided with when getting a loan, something that you can create yourself or possibly once again, ask your accounting firm uh, to do that and they can give you that. That's one method that you can use. That's what we're doing here. Or if you wanna automate the transactions, again, you could say, hey, look, I'm gonna depend on my CPA firm to fix the amortization at the end of the period and adjust any if the loans to what they need to adjust them to. I'm just gonna try to automate everything possibly with the bank feeds. So you might say, hey, look, on the bookkeeping side, I'm gonna record everything as a payment that's gonna go and decrease the loan balance account. And then at the end of the year, you're gonna to go to your CPA firm and say, hey, look, these are my loan documents. These are the purchases I made and financed the purchases for my equipment. And I would like you to put the equipment on the books for taxes, do the depreciation schedules, make the amortization schedules, make the journal entry that's necessary in order to record the equipment and the loan, and then break out the interest in principle. And given the fact that the, the tax preparer, depending on how much detail they're doing anyways on the, on the bookkeeping side at the end of the year, they might be doing a lot of that work anyways if they're kind of double checking all the loans and stuff, depending on how much stuff they're doing. So that, that could be a method that they, they could work as well. And that allows you to automate everything on a cash basis system, possibly scale up and have a bookkeeper that can kind of do that period end type of stuff. But of course, you need to be working with a team with a CPA firm or accounting firm that can handle that, those adjusting transactions at the end of the year, not just someone that's gonna, gonna just take whatever income statement you give them and just plug that into the tax return or something if, if you're planning on these adjusting entries. Okay, so what we have here, of course, is, is we have been following the amortization schedule. Okay, so the next issue you have is breaking out the short-term and long-term portion of a loan because by definition, a current liability is something that's going to be due within a year and the long term is something that's due after a year so when you're thinking about a a loan if they're paid in installments we're going to have a short-term portion and a long-term portion so once again we from the bookkeeping side of things are not going to want to break each individual loan such as this loan here into a short-term and long-term portion each time we make a payment because then we would have to figure out what the short-term and long-term portion is every time we make a payment, that's way too tedious. So that for sure is something that we would probably wanna do periodically for external reporting purposes, possibly at the end of the month or year. Now, this breakout might not be something that's absolutely necessary for small businesses because you might just have a Schedule C that you're doing for taxes, which is basically just the income statement. So you might not need the balance sheet or external reporting purposes. It is useful to break out for internal uh, evaluation from time to time as well because you want to be seeing if if you can pay off your current liabilities with the current assets using your ratio analysis 
So uh, that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna break out the short-term and long-term portion. And this is not really a classic adjusting entry because although we do it at the end of the period to make things right periodically and make it easy for the bookkeeper to do what the bookkeeping does and the adjustments to be made at the end of the period, it doesn't have an income statement component. There's not a timing difference. There's just a difference between short-term and long-term on the balance sheet. All right, so let's do it. How are we gonna do it? Then if I look at my amortization schedule, this is where we stand as of this point in time. I'm actually gonna move, move this whole thing to the right if I can. Just gonna try to move this over here. So I have a little bit of room. Give me a little bit of room. Tables are crowding me. I don't like being crowded like that. All right, so now we're gonna say, say if this is both short-term and long-term, the short-term portion is the next uh, 12 payments that we're going to be making. Now you might think you could just do this. You might say, well, why don't I just say the short-term portion is this times 12, right? And then the long-term portion is gonna be wherever I'm here now minus this. And that doesn't quite work because the payments you're making take into consideration interest. And interest is something that we have not yet incurred. We know we're gonna pay it in the future. We've already obligated ourselves to pay it, but that would be like paying rent. That would be like saying, well, I signed a contract to pay, you know, a thousand, you know, a hundred thousand of rent, you know, next year. And so I'm just gonna record it today as a liability. Well, no, you, can, you may not be able to get out of the contract to pay it next year, but you still haven't incurred the rent because you haven't used the office building yet, you know? So that's in the same thing as here. You haven't incurred the interest because you haven't used the, the money yet to help generate revenue. So the way we have to do it then is say that the long-term portion is gonna be equal to, let's say the sum, equal to the sum of, uh, let's say we're gonna start here and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 12 periods down. So I think that's right. And then we're gonna say, and then we're gonna say that the long-term portion is this minus this, or in other words, that number should match. If I go, if I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. If I make that yellow, then there's the ending point right there. That's where we will be after a month of making the payments because the difference between the two this minus this is going to be the interest that we have to pay so that's going to be just the, you know the, the money that's not going to be taking down the loan that's just the interest that we're going to be paying okay so that's the idea so this is going to be short term and long term i'm going to say so that's that's going to be our adjusting entry so so i have everything in current the short-term portion. So I've got to break out the long-term portion. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to go back on over here and I'm going to say for this particular loan, I need a long, I need a long-term portion of uh, the loan, uh, which is going to be long-term. So I need to go to my first tab. Let's go to our chart of accounts, which is under accounting. We're going to go to the chart of accounts. If you're in the business view, by the way, by the way, it's under bookkeeping and the chart of accounts. That's where it's located. All right, so, and then in here, I'm gonna make another loan account and uh, I might make a parent account and then another loan just to show you if we had if we had multiple loans, but we only need to break out like one of them. So I'm gonna say new, I'm gonna say this is gonna be a liability, but it's gonna be a long-term, it's not current. We're gonna say this is gonna be long-term liability. They've got one here, long-term business loan. So I'll, I'll use that as the parent account. I would might wanna just call it loan payable, but I'll use that as the parent account. And then I'll call this the, the uh, loan. This is, this was, this was the Chase loan long-term portion, let's say, or something like that. I'll save it. So if I scroll down here, I'm gonna say, all right, there's my, so there's the Chase loan short term, and then we've got our long term loans, and there's our 
uh, Chase loan long term. I probably should have put the, the last four digits of the loan number to match the other loan so we can see that these two are tied together, right? But the question, the, the idea here is that this is the individual loan that ties out to that loan up top. I might want to put, uh, yeah, lo let's keep it. I'll keep it at that as the name long term portion of the business loan. Uh, loan. I mean, I, let's let's change it. I'm going to say edit. Let's say this is going to be. This is going to be loan payable, loan payable, long term por portion. I'd rather do that long, but loan is spelled this way. You idiot. Okay. No need. There's no need for there's that was uncalled for. All right. So now, now that we have that, we could then uh, go into either of these because both of them have a register. So we're going to enter a journal entry, which we could do with this, or we can just go right into the register. So I'm going to go into the register with a long-term loan payable. I'm going to enter a journal entry as of 02-28-23, the cutoff date. And the memo is going to be to Brent is going to be, let's say, uh, ADJ entry. And this one is going to increase by that 56, 7, 69, right? So it's going to be 56769.59. And the other side is going to go to the loan payable to the Chase account for the short term loan payable. So there we have it. And that should take the short term amount down to 13,108.54. So let's save it and close it and see if that is indeed what happens. Going back to the balance sheet to check it, run it to refresh it, and then scroll it, down it. And then we're going to go down to the liability section where we've got now, see there's the 13,108.54. That's the short term portion. Boom. And then if I click on it, we can see the activity. We can see what's been done, what we just did. What did you do? This is what I did. There it is. Let's put the adjusting entry down here too so we can see it on both sides of the transaction. Close it back up, scrolling up to the top. The other side's gonna be into the long-term portion. Uh, long-term business loan. I thought I changed the name so now i've got long-term liabilities long-term business loan i don't like that so if i'm in the chart of accounts here i could have sworn i changed this to loan payable like i changed the name did i not did i not let's hit the drop down and edit it again because i i could have swore so i called it other current i want to call it loan payable long-term portion portion something like that so it kind of mirrors what i had up top you know what i mean you know what i'm talking about let's go back on over and then run it again it's not a big deal or anything but that's i'm just saying that's how i want it to look so i'm going to go down so we got loan payable i should put maybe short term here and then loan payable, loan payable, long-term portion, and then uh, chase loan. We only got one loan in that area because the other loan we had up here only has a short-term portion to it. So maybe that's not the best way to name it, but that's the general idea, right? We've got loan payable up top. This is gonna be sh the, the short-term, which I can collapse. And, and you don't really need to put short-term because it's under other current liabilities already. It's in the short-term area. And then you've got, and then you can expand it for internal reporting purposes. And then down here, you've got the loan payable for the long term, which again, long term is kind of redundant. I could have just put loan payable again, although it wouldn't let me put two loan payables with the same exact name, possibly. But the point is, I can expand this and then I can check out and double check this to my amortization table per loan. Now, clearly, we only have one loan down here, which is long term. So maybe you could have just put that just simply into loan payable. But I think it's useful to have this idea of having the parent and then expanding it so that if you have other loans that have a short term and long term portion to it, then you can use the same concept. Now, the next presentation, we're going to reverse this transaction 
because note that going forward, after I make the next payment next month, it'll throw off the short term and long term portion. So I don't want to have that internally. This is something I want to do on the adjusting end of things and then reverse it so that the accounting department can deal with just simply one account per loan. So that's what we'll do next time. Okay, let's take a look at some of our reports. Go into the tab to the right, right click and duplicate it. Opening up the trial balance. The trustee T to the B reports on the left hand side. And closing up the boogie and typing in trial balance. Trial balance. And let's change the range from 010123 to 022823. Drop down months and then run it. So this is where we stand on the trial balance. I won't open the, the journal reports this time. I'll open them possibly next time when we do the reversing entries. So we'll, this is where we stand at this point in time. If everything you have lines up to what we have, we're on the same page, that's good. At the end of the uh, adjusting entries, we will run a journal report to help drill down on any differences, any discrepancies.